Okay, so today we are going to be talking about the books that I read this quarter. So far this year, every quarter I have uh, done like a quarterly wrap up and then my favorites and least favorites of what I read in those three months. So this quarter of the year is near done. So let's talk. Before we get into the list of books and favorites and least favorites, a shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. From websites to online stores to marketing tools to analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that helps you to build your website and grow your business. But we'll talk more about them at the end of the video. Okay, books. First, a really quick uh, summary or a really quick list of the books that I've read and like one sentence I'll attempt summaries of the books and then we'll get into the favorites and the least favorites. So the first book that I finished this quarter was Theft of Swords, which is kind of a two-in-one. This is the first two books that are bound up in this one. The first book in this two books is uh, A Heist of Swords. It's these best friends who are really good at um, thievery and ne'er-do-wells. They get this seemingly too good to be true job that is in fact too good to be true and get into nonsense. The first book was really fast-paced and fun. The characters were fun, but I really wasn't hooked on it. Everything uh, was nice. It was a fast-paced good book, but it didn't really go very deep for me in either the characters or the plot or the world building. But then the, the second book, which is the second book in this bind up. Uh, I thought that was the one that really that really got me because that's when we expanded on the world a lot more. That's when we got a lot more depth from the characters. I still haven't continued on with the series, but I will. I also read a ton of One Piece this quarter. I don't even know the beginning or end of it, but I read a lot of One Piece. I was re-reviewing. I went back and reread the first three sagas and now I've continued on into the new world and I really love this series. <laughs> I think my channel reflects that very strongly. I'm having a wonderful time. Uh, next I read The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin, which is the first book in this series. I probably won't continue on with the series. So our protagonist is an outcast from the ruling ki kingdom Sky, uh, but she goes goes into this kingdom because she technically is heir to the throne and then she unexpectedly is embraced or or accepted as an heir to the throne and then kind of thrust into this competition with her cousins to fight it out essentially for this position but it's you know it's a kingdom of gods they have powers there's it's very 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 political then i read the whispering dead which is a uh horror novel. It's very, very, very light horror. Uh, this girl is being chased and she ends up in this cemetery that this pastor lives on. He takes her in and uh, protects her from the people who are hunting her down. She ends up staying in the cottage. She has memory loss. She doesn't know who she is, where she's from, what she's about. She ends up staying in a cottage. There are ghosts and she is left trying to figure out why these ghosts are hanging around and what they're trying to communicate to her. I didn't really like it. Pirate Latitudes is uh, is is an adventure about pirates. The real, real quick, quick synopsis of this is it is about a plan between a governor and a notorious pirate hunter, and they're going to raid the Spanish treasure galleon. It's an adventure. Pirates, morally corrupt, bad guys. Oh, then I read Dead House Gates, which is the second Malazan book. I still haven't read the third. I've got a lot going on in my life and I just don't have the mental bandwidth for Malazan, but I will continue on with the series. I promise I will. It's just, this is a bad time for me to be reading it, it turns out. But I really enjoyed Dead House Gates a lot. Uh, it, it was so dark and it was so hard to read and it was so heavy, which is a big reason why this is not the right time for me to be reading it. But um, I just really connect with the way Steven Erickson writes his characters. I just think that he writes them really honestly. He doesn't try to make them likable. He just likes to make them real. Project Hail Mary is an adult sci-fi. This is a standalone. It's about a man who has memory loss, who uh, is on a space expedition to try to save the world. And we start off the book going back and forth between the now and the then. The now is him on this shuttle trying to uh, figure out what he's supposed to be doing and can't, can't, he has selective memory loss. And then slowly these memories are coming back so we're getting these flashes of his past, of who he was before this moment, and how he got to this 
point. It is really sweet, it's really funny, it's very lighthearted, and it's, um, has, it has a character that I really, really enjoyed reading. Next book I finished was A Natural History of Drag, 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 Dragons, Natural History of Dragons, where we follow Lady Twins, Trent, as she writes her memoir. She's an old lady now, and she has become a naturalist. She has beaten the odds and forged a path as someone who gets to study dragons and travel the world on these expeditions for, to further her, her knowledge and her understanding. And, um, I really enjoy these books. They're so unique. They're so different. I love Lady Trent. I love her very dry way of looking back at her past and her old mistakes and, and the things that she's gone through. I think these books are really, really fun. Oh, then I read The Bands of Mourning, which is the third book in the second era of Mistborn. I really enjoyed this one as well. It's the third book in the series, so there's not much I can say about it. It's Mistborn Powers in an industrial era, era um, but Sanderson's doing such a great job of building on the power so it doesn't just feel like the same magic system in a different setting. Uh, I'm really getting connected to a lot of these characters. The plot, I think, is very interesting. This one was very fast-paced and, and, and exciting. Book two of the Mistborn era two is still is still my favorite, but I really loved book three as well. Piranesi is a very short book, a slow burn mystery. Uh, this man is stuck in a house that has a labyrinth of rooms and he is just discovering the mysteries of the house, but at the same time uh, very unsure of what's happening. But there's also another man in the house that he doesn't get to see very often who has more knowledge and more resources, but he's a friend. We trust him. So there's a lot going on in this book. It's a very slow unraveling, so I don't want to say much. The Bone Shard Daughter is a book with five POVs, but the main two POVs is um, Lynn, who is the Emperor's daughter, and she has lost her memories. Man, I read a lot of lost her memories books, and I don't even like that trope. But I mean, you know, I, I liked it in some of these books. She has lost her memories, and she is trying to gain them back so that she can learn the Bone Shard magic so that she can become the Emperor. But her father refuses to teach her Bone Shard magic until she regains her memories. And the other perspective is, perspective is of a man who is a smuggler, and he is trying to protect the people of the kingdom, which I won't go into in this quickie review. But really his main goal is just to find his wife who uh, he's trying to search for. Then I read The Maidens, which is a thriller about a woman who's huh, her kind of adoptive daughter. She's not really adopted, but she's kind of taken her on as a daughter figure. Her daughter's best friend uh, died at this college campus, and there's a lot of shady things going on around that death. So our protagonist, who is a therapist, decides to become an amateur sleuther, and she tries to solve the memory, I mean, solve the mystery, on behalf of everything, and I didn't like this book at all. Then I read The Lies of Locke Lamora, which was a reread for me, and it was excellent. I love this series. This is one of my favorite series. I'm currently doing a read-along for it. Group of orphans growing up to be swindlers and thieves and try to pull off a magnificent heist, and it was magnificent. Then I read Tropic of Serpents, which is book two in the Lady Trent memoirs. It was also great, just like book one was. A lot more political, um, and I loved it. Ray Bear, which is about a woman, or about a girl who has a curse on her that she has to try to become a council member of one of the future emperors, and the curse is that once she becomes a council member, she has to try to kill him. So she does the thing, and then she's trying to fight against the curse because she actually has a really good relationship with these council members and with him, and that's all I'll say about the setup. Then I read The Humans, which is an adult sci-fi, and it is about an alien who comes onto Earth to um, dispose of and impersonate a human who has discovered something that the aliens don't want him to discover, and it's it's comical, it's light, it's funny, and it has a lot of little um, introspective nuggets to chew on that I thought I, I really enjoyed. Instructions for Dancing is a romance about a girl who's given up on love, but then a cute boy comes and she has visions of people's futures, so she is, so she decides to try to follow fate to get rid of these visions. She ends up in a dance competition with a boy. The chemistry is adorable. I really liked it. Then I read Monstrous Waters, which is a collection of short stories for these monstrous things that come on the hottest day of summer. It was written by a group of my patrons over on my Patreon. These are people I know. These are people I love. I loved reading their stories. And finally, this, this, 
chunker of a list for the books that I've read in the last three months ends on Red Seas Under Red Skies, which again is a reread of one of my favorite series, and it's the same, it's the same basic idea, these orphans who have grown up to be swindlers and thieves, but now they're blackmailed to be pirates for hire, and I love it! Okay, if you follow my videos, then you probably already know what my favorites and least favorites are going to be, because I've been pretty outspoken about all of them at this point. I have four favorites, three least favorites that I'll talk about. So we'll start with a favorite, and that's going to be One Piece. This series has blown me away. It has shocked me. It has it has truly surprised me. I thought it was a fun adventure. I thought that it was a cute story, and it ended up being something so deep and so vast and so incredible. It's become one of my favorite series, and the further I read, the more I feel that way. Okay, for my three least favorites, the first one I'll mention is the first one that I read this season, and that is The Whispering Dead. That's the one that was the ghost story, the girl who is staying in a cemetery and there's ghosts. So part of my problem with this is that it's it's written, it's listed as a horror, and I just don't think it is one. I think that it's a little bit mildly spooky, but really, I don't really know how you would list it, so maybe horror is fair. But it was really, there was a lot more, there was a lot more focus on, on the characters, her kind of getting to know people in town than there was on the mystery itself. The mystery itself, I've read before. I've read this kind of like, there's a ghost here trying to communicate something. I need to go solve the mystery of how they died so that I can put them at rest. Like, I've read that, uh, which isn't a bad thing. I've liked that plot in other places, and it was fine here, but it wasn't spooky at all. It was just, like, interesting, and, and for it to kind of be more interesting to me. Like, I wanted a horror. I looked at the genre, it said horror, I wanted a horror, and it wasn't. But then also, um, it was... It, 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 the plot kind of broke down pretty quickly, like, ghosts are trapped at their tombstone, at the cemetery, which is why they're trying to communicate with her, but then there's also ghosts that are trapped at their point of death, and there's absolutely no explanation as to why the ghosts are sometimes trapped here and sometimes trapped there. It's just, like, whatever the plot needs. And there were a couple of things like that that it was just, like, I don't know. It just, well, I just didn't like it. Uh, another one of my favorites this month was The Bone Shard, Shard Daughter, which I've talked about a lot up to this point, but, you know, I just, I just really, really liked it. The magic was so cool, and it was a very dark concept of, like, this, the, these, these groups of people that are forced to give up a piece of their bone shard behind their ear, and then that's kept at the, at the, the Emperor's palace, and he uses it for his magic, and when he uses it, it depletes the life of the people, and so there's this animosity and this this resentment, uh, but then also the emperor himself is filled with so much mystery, and when things start unraveling in Lin's perspective, like, it just gets, it goes in a really surprising direction that ends up having, it, it, it ended up leading to a lot of really great conversations. This was one of my Patreon buddy reads. It ended up le leading to a lot of really great conversations about, like, morally, what's the right choice here? And I loved that. I loved that that was there. Uh, one of the other main characters, the one that's kind of, like, smuggling people uh, under the Empire's nose while looking for his wife. He is just so sweet. I love his character so much. And then he also has this kind of sea dragon companion that is my favorite thing. I'm just, I just really liked this book. My biggest complaint is that it's not nearly environmental enough for a story that's this cool, for an empire that's this awesome, for a way that the different, the different dynamics of the uh, of the empire uh, work together so well. I want to just be more immersed and the writing style is a little bit removed and I wish it worked. But I loved this story. I loved these characters and I'm so excited for book two. Uh, another one that I didn't really care for this month was Pirate Latitude. So Michael Creighton is a sci-fi author that I've been getting into that I've been really enjoying his work. I'm slowly chipping away at his work and I've really liked the books of his that I've read so far. Pirate Latitudes is not sci-fi. It's an adventure novel and it's about pirates. But I love pirates so much. And I don't know, this is a book that was published after he died. I, as far as I understand it, it was a book that was found on his computer after he died, and then they published it, and I feel like, I, I feel like you can tell. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things that just don't feel very polished, and that I think, I think I, I can just tell that if Creighton was going to publish this, he would have spent more time on it. And while I don't necessarily dislike the story, there's just so much that was like very fast. It was it was just very abrupt and then over or or 
I don't know, just scenes, the best way I could say it is it just, I could just tell it wasn't nearly as polished as Creighton's work usually is. And it was fine. I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like it that much. I liked it. I did like it. I didn't dislike it, but sorry, Alec. Sorry. A Natural History of Dragons is another uh, story that I've talked about a lot that I've really, really enjoyed this Lady Trent's memoirs. Uh, I love Lady Trent. I love our protagonist. I love her way of looking back at her life and her very uh, brutally honest depiction of herself and of, of the things that she went through. I love the discussions. It's very, it's very, uh, I, I keep saying that it's, it's similar to Jane Austen, the way she writes her stories. It's very, critical of society on top of of the stories and i i love the way she's doing it um isabella our protagonist she just is constantly pushing back and she's pushing back with just the best words and i'm so impressed by her constantly i wish there were more dragons for a story that is focused on her studying dragons i wish there were more dragons but I'm really enjoying reading through these and then the last least favorite book that i have here is uh the maidens so I didn't like this book. This is the one that was the thriller, the the woman who does her amateur sleuthing because her um, her kind of daughter, it, her friend died. And it's just, it was such a cool setup. It's like this dark academia is what it's promised to be. And this professor that's certainly a creep that has this kind of like cult of young pretty girl students that follow him around and that he privately tutors and there's definitely something weird happening there and they're called the maidens which is what the book is called but we barely put any focus on the maidens even though it would be way cooler if the book just was following the maidens themselves our protagonist is the most irritating protagonist in the whole wide world she keeps inserting herself in places where she shouldn't be everybody falls all over themselves to try to help her break the law and do all the things that she shouldn't be doing she's a dumb dumb and there was enough there was enough cool setup to this that it could have been a really good book and it wasn't I have a review for it where I, I really go in on it. So if you like that kind of thing, there it is. But I really, I really thought that this book had a lot of potential and it was just a bum ski for me. And the final book that I really, really loved this month was Piranesi. Uh, this is the one about the man who's in the house with like the labyrinth of doors. And that's just something, that's just a setup that I really like. Bone Shard Daughter does it too. I really like this idea of this massive place with doors that could lead to anywhere and the mystery of what's behind those doors and the mystery of what's in this, in this place. And Piranesi leans into that so much. This, 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 uh, feeling of anything could happen here and this feeling of awe, this feeling of wonder, this feeling of, um, of the world being so much bigger than me and, I don't know, I just really liked it. I think my favorite part about this book is is not even necessarily the mystery. Piranesi is a wonderful character, but my favorite part of, about this book isn't necessarily the mystery or those elements. My favorite part about this book, I think, is just the environment and the general feelings that it captured. I felt like I fully, I don't know, um, took in her prose and her writing and 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 the awe that she that Piranesi was feeling I felt too and it was just a cool it's just a cool perspective to read from anyway that is a list of the books that I read this quarter and some quick synopses about them quick descriptions about them my favorites my least favorites just a whole bunch of information in this video hope you enjoyed it here's an ad welcome to how to create a Squarespace website with Murphy. Today we are going to create custom bookmarks and a custom website to showcase it. Sorry about the tripod legs and the screen. I'm very unprofessional. So the first thing you need is a piece of paper and some scissors to cut into a bookmark shape and a marker to draw whatever it is you're going to be doing. And while you're cutting and drawing, I recommend thinking about how you're going to be sharing your website. Like with Squarespace's social sharing, the Squarespace blogging platform supports a configurable sharing button, letting your visitors share content on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Reddit, Pinterest, Tumblr, everywhere. So you can share these beautiful bookmarks when you're done. Now you've made the base of your bookmarks. Next is going to be the glue and the glitter. Now I recommend doing this step 
on a hard wooden surface, like maybe your floor or a table, um, not your ottoman, but I'm a professional, so we're gonna take the risk. And while you're doing this step, think about the glue of your website, like integrated analytics. Refine your email strategy with real-time campaign and website analytics from one source. Learn what content leads to higher engagement, tracking metrics from send to sale. Now, all you have to do is drop the glitter off of there. Oh my goodness, it turned out so good! Now, I know what you're thinking. Are my bookmarks gonna turn out as good as yours? And the answer is no, because I'm a professional, but your website can. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the link in my description and you'll save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. One last tip, I do recommend not laminating these because studies have shown that readers really like getting glitter in their books. So thank you for joining me for today's session of how to build a website for your bookmarks or anything you wanna build a website for. We'll see you again next time. So there you go. Those are my favorites and least favorites of this season. I would love to continue chatting with you about this in the comments. Uh, have you read any of them? What are your favorites? What are your least favorites? Please give me your top favorites and least favorites that you've read this season. I post videos every Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you again soon. Bye.